Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Progressive and we're going to be talking about simple checks that you can make on your car at home and I would recommend doing this at least every six months uh, if not more often than that. Certainly some of these items you will want to check more often than once every six months but these are simple checks that you can do at home to make sure your car is in good running condition. So we're going to start with the exterior of the vehicle looking at the tires, the brakes, the suspension and then we will dive under the hood and start looking at filters as well as fluid checks. Now starting with the tires there's three things we want to be looking at. The tread depth, the tire pressure, and how the tire is wearing. Now starting with the tread depth on all tires you'll have these wear bar indicators so you'll notice them within the grooves and so what these indicators tell you if you roll your finger across from one tread block over to the next over top of one of these tread wear indicators and it runs perfectly smooth across rather than falling down into the groove and then back up. If it runs perfectly smooth across then that means you need to replace your tires. Next it's important to make sure your tires are properly inflated. You'll find the tire pressure information on the inside of your door jam or within your owner's manual and you want to make sure that this tire pressure doesn't get too low because this can result in uneven wear, worse fuel economy, and increase your chances for hydroplaning. And finally we get to tread wear. So if you look at your tire and you notice that the center of the tire is wearing down more than the outside of the tire, then that probably indicates your tire pressure is too high. If the outsides are worn down but the center isn't as much, then your tire pressure is likely too low. And if you notice that one side of a tire is wearing far more than the other side, then it likely means you need your alignment readjusted. Next we're going to inspect the brakes. Now I've removed the wheel using the spare tire kit from the back of the vehicle but oftentimes you won't actually have to remove the wheel. You can simply look through the holes in the wheel and look at your brake pads. So looking at a brake pad, a new brake pad will typically have around 12 millimeters of pad material remaining and you want to start thinking about replacing it once that pad material gets down to about three millimeters. If you've only got one or two millimeters left of pad material you want to replace those brake pads. Oftentimes, when these brake pads get down to about three millimeters, they'll have a metal indicator in there and you'll start hearing a screeching sound from your brakes, letting you know that it's time to replace them. Moving on to the shock absorber, you wanna make sure you don't see any fluids leaking out of the damper. You also wanna look for any visual damage on the shock or on the springs and make sure everything looks like it's in good working condition. And again, you don't have to remove the wheels to do this. You can simply rotate your steering wheel all the way to one side, look in from that angle, rotate the steering wheel all the way to the other side, and then look in from the other angle. Okay, now let's take a look underneath the hood. Now the first thing we're going to look at is the engine oil. So you're going to want to find the dipstick and pull it out. And as you pull it out, we're going to wipe down the entire thing using a towel. So we're going to clean it off. That way we can get a good reading once we insert it back in. So once we know that it's clean, stick it right back in. And then we're going to pull that out and read it. And so looking at the dipstick once it's pulled out after you've cleaned it off and then stuck it back in and then pulled it out once more, you will see that there are two little indicators. So there's a hole right there and there's another hole right here. And so you want your oil level to be somewhere between these two. And you can see that here it's right at the end, uh, right at the high fill line. Now if it's right towards the bottom or if you don't see any oil, you might want to add about half a quart to the engine and then recheck the engine oil level uh, using the dipstick and add as needed. You want to make sure though that it lies between these two indicators. Now as far as how frequent you should be changing the oil, refer to your owner's manual. And one thing you also may want to look for is if you see a milkiness in the oil's color, that can indicate that coolant is getting in within your engine oil. And so that's a big problem. You don't want to have that happening. So just make sure that it's either clear or starting to get darkish. That darkish uh, color comes from the oil holding contaminants uh, before you change it out. Now, depending on your vehicle, you're going to have different fluids that you need to check. So, for example, this vehicle has electronic power steering, so there's no power steering fluid to check. You do want to check the brake fluid, so you'll see a max and a minimum indicator line on the brake fluid reservoir, and so you want to make sure that the brake fluid is between those two lines. You'll see the same thing on your coolant reservoir, so somewhere near your radiator or coming from your radiator, you'll have an expansion tank for the radiator, and you'll see a min and a max line. You want to make sure that the coolant falls between the min and the max line, and of course top off your windshield washer fluid as needed. Next we move on to filters and there are two filters which we're going to want to inspect. The first of which being the engine air filter and oftentimes these actually don't require tools to gain access to. Uh, you can simply pull these out 
and inspect uh, with just some clips which are used on this. And you can see there is a little bit of debris in there, but overall it looks pretty good, still very clean. You can shake out some of that debris and then put that back in or replace it with a new filter. The second filter we wanna check is the cabin air filter. So you'll generally find this behind the glove box and it usually won't require any tools to remove. Simply pop that out and inspect. So this one's looking okay. It's definitely got some debris in there. So I'll tap some of this out uh, and perhaps consider replacing this fairly soon. There is a good amount of, you know, kind of dirt and debris stuck in there. And go ahead and slide that back in and then we'll place the glove box back in. It's also a good idea to check out your wiper blades. You want to make sure that it's a nice, smooth, continuous surface that doesn't have any cracks in it and that the rubber isn't starting to deteriorate. You know, it's still flexible so that it maintains good contact with your windshield. And finally, you want to make sure that all of your lights are working properly. So your headlights, your indicators, and then for your brake lights, you can either have a friend check the brake lights for you while you press on the brake pedal, or you can set up a mirror or perhaps use your phone and record them and make sure that all of your brake lights are working. So hopefully this has provided you with some useful information, easy stuff to check over on your car, but it can save you a headache in the long run and it could save you some money as well if you catch a problem early. So thank you all for watching and of course thank you to Progressive for partnering on this video.